I will start now. I might look here. The program is right. Okay. This is something actually I thought it would have been better if it is there. Right. So the problems are, for example, we are studying various stuff. We study anatomy, we study physiology, right? We study pharmacology, we study pathology, we study embryology, right? We study what is a histology, biochemistry, right? So one of the things which makes the stuff difficulties, right? One of the things which makes the stuff difficulties, we are most of the time we are studying, right? Most of the time we are studying without any proper clinical integration, right? So for example, this is a problem actually, not only for you, it's for a problem to everybody, right? So this is how we study guys, right? Uh, we study the anatomy, right? For example, you study anatomy, right? You finish it off, the first year you finish it off or the second year you finish it off, right? We study up to 100%. Right, we study up to 100%, right, 100%. And the issue is, right, we study everything. We do an exam. We are okay at that time we are doing an exam. We know basically 100%. At the end of the exam, again, we are coming back to the zero, right? Similarly, you study the physiology, you study the pharmacology, pathology, etc. So by the time we start this medicine in the final year or fourth year or whatever it is, we basically, we barely remember any, what do you say, basic sciences that is required for medicine. And sometimes when we start the classes in ERPM for medicine, sometimes students come and say, right? Students come and say, sir, we forget all the basic things, right? We forget all the basic things. Is it an issue, right? I will say it's not an issue because even without that, I can make you pass the ERPM. There's no issue with that, right? I will teach whatever the necessary stuff and tell it in such a way and make you pass the ERPM. But the issue is that problem is there throughout the life, right? Even later they say, right, we don't remember the basic sciences, right? And actually that has been realized by the universities as well. So nowadays, almost all the postgraduate stream, if you take medicine, right, surgery, the first postgraduate exam, MD part one, is basically a basic sciences exam, right? So. As I said here, look at if you look at this photo, we come to zero, we come to zero, we come to zero, right? But that is not the way we are supposed to be. So what I want is I want you to come to this point, right? Somewhere here, right? By the time you come to your final years or the fourth year, or when you start studying medicine, I will be happy if you are there at a point somewhere here, right? Rather than starting from here. So why we are not here at the point, it's not your fault or our fault, right? We also have the same thing, right? The reason is we are studying 100% of the anatomy without knowing what is the 10% that is required for life, right? You study 100% without knowing what is the 10% that is required for life, right? Okay, so that's where the issue comes, right? That's where the issue comes, right? So, if you know the important 10% in the anatomy, physiology, or pathology, right, what is required for life, then there won't be an issue in remembering that, right? So what I am trying to do here, okay, what I am trying to do here is, I am trying to show, right, right, how to correlate this and learn as a basic course. For example, if you look at the cardiology, the cardiology, we are going to talk about the anatomy of the heart. I'll show you here. I look here, this is how my higher plan, my cardiology. So this is the integrated approach to cardiology. So we start from the case history. Then we talk about the relevant anatomy, right? Then we talk about the relevant anatomy. So we talk about the important stuff, what is required in the anatomy, what is required in the anatomy, right? What is required in the anatomy, which you have to remember for the rest of the life. Understood? So it's like this, right? Say, what are the anatomical thing in the cardiology you have to know. Once it is done, right, we talk about the blood supply, we talk about the valves, we talk about the pericardial effusion, right, we talk about the, how the blood supply of the different portions are different and why that is important, right? So once that is done, right, once that is done, right, I'm going to talk about the important physiological stuff, right? 
So important physiological stuff. How the physiology is important. For example, you know, everybody know there is a chest pain which is radiating to the medial side of the arm, right? When there is a chest pain, right? When there is a chest pain, okay? When there is a chest pain, why it is going to the medial side of the arm? That's come, there comes the referred pain, right? And what is the pathophysiology or the physiology of the referred pain, right? Then comes to the embryology, right? Then comes to the embryology. So if you look at the embryology, what do you have to know in the embryology, in the cardiology is, I will say only basically one thing you have to know, nothing else, one thing you have to know. So what is that one thing, right? What is that one thing that is the mainly the development of the cardiac atrial septum and a little bit of patent ductus arteriosus, right? So only that will have an embryology. So once that is done, right? Once that is done, I will move on to the physiology of the heart. I will move on to the physiology of the heart with the importance of cardiac sounds, right? Cardiac cycle, right? What are the changes? And what is the pathophysiology in the, what do you say, uh, in the cardiac conduction of the physiology of the cardiac conduction? And what is the pathophysiology of the, what do you say, heart failure, heart failure, heart failure, right? So once that is done, right? Once that is done in the physiology, say, you know, I will talk about the blood supply of the heart, right? I will talk about the blood supply of the heart. With the blood supply of the heart, now we have a chest pain. Why have we have a chest pain, right? Why we have a chest pain, right? Because, right, because, right, right, because with the blood, whenever there is an atherosclerosis, or that is your cholesterol plaque, cholesterol plaque, whenever there is a cholesterol plaque at your coronary artery, at your coronary artery, you have a, what do you say, uh, decreased blood supply to the heart. And that is leading to the myocardial infarction. So I am going to talk here, right? At that point, I will take my lecture towards atherosclerosis, right? So I am going to talk about the pathology of, what do you say, atherosclerosis. This is the pathology, right? So once you talk about the pathology of atherosclerosis, so we are, I'm going to talk, there is a plaque here. There is an atherosclerotic plaque here, right? There is an atherosclerotic plaque here. Now I'm going to talk how this plaque is formed. That is your basically your pathology. Now we are going to say when it comes to the myocardial infarction, this plaque is rupturing, right? This plaque is rupturing. So when this plaque is rupturing, there is a thrombus formation, right? There is a thrombus formation, clear? So there we are going to talk about the pathology of the myocardial infarction and how the thrombus is formed, right? You may have heard, right? You may have heard there is a platelet response, there is a vascular response, there is a clotting response that will have an hematology related to the pathology. We'll talk about a little bit of biochemistry, right? So you know about this biochemistry, what we are talking in there, what you say, uh, studying in the first year, right? It's a complete mess, right? I don't know about you, right? We used to refer a book called, what do you say? We used to refer a book called Lipin Cot. It's a blue color book with a yellow color, what do you say, heading, right? Lipin Cot. So if you look at the Lipin Cot, the kids will get nausea, right? When they see that book, right? The girls will get vomiting, right? And the ladies will get hyperemesis, right? Because that book is that huge, right? And completely unrelated, 95% of the thing, right? So we just talk about just the important things about the biochemistry here. Now, once that is done, now there is a plaque, right? Now there is a plaque, right? Now the plaque has ruptured and the patient is having chest pain, right? And the patient is having chest pain. Okay, fine. So now what are you going to do pharmacologically? Yeah, what is the mechanism? Right, whatever the drug you are giving, right? Whatever the drug you are giving, right? Whatever the drug you are giving, how does that act? How does that act, right? How does that act, right? So that's what I'm going to talk at that point, clear? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to talk about the pharmacology. What is the pharmacological mechanism of the streptokinase? What is the pharmacological mechanism of the RTPU? What is the pharmacological mechanism of the antiplatelet, right? What is the pharmacological mechanism of the anticoagulant and how do they act at different parts of the cycle? Clear, guys? So basically, that's what planned in this because this is not an anatomy, physiology, or pathology, or pharmacology, right? This is everything together as a, what do you say, integrated manner. Understood, guys? Right? 
so i just take a basic introduction to the course right okay so all together this will be 10 lectures right okay well if you say after today's class if you think this is a useless thing i will stop it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter right? i just want your feedback and i will put if you are interested i will put the payment details if you are not interested i'll stop it as simple as that right there's not i have no reason to do this because i have the erp and there right so the cardiology will be two classes respiratory will be one class nephrology will be one class gi and hepatology one class neuro two class endo hemat one class, right so all together it will be 10 classes right 10 classes starting from today this will be a proper class today right okay fine now so basically i'll try to cover whatever the stuff we have for the rest of the life undergraduate level and the point because there are something you can't forget guys blood supply of the heart we can't come and say we can forget that and move on right that's impossible right it's something like that so basically it'll be useful from any people right but if you are coming and saying i'm going to sit for the next erpm exam whenever we don't know we have maybe taken a two three months right in such a case i don't expect you to come and listen here because i hope you should be aware of these things at this point right at this point there's no point in advertising for you right for my money right right you should be aware of this at this point right okay so but if you are about to start this erpm about to start this emc plap or whatever it is then there is a meaning right then there is a meaning right okay so well the structure is 10 classes right okay then what do you say actually the charge will be i thought 10 classes will be 10000 a thousand rupees per class or the 54 dollars right but right because the thing is guys to get the payment as separate installments is a real headache right you have to send again you have to send the receipt i have to send it right it's a real headache right so there's no point in doing like that as well right real headache right but okay but you know there is an issue right our people will buy like right, 9999 right right but the stuff will be stupid right but when they say 10000 a good stuff right people will think twice because like right, it's a 900 rupees 990 rupees sleeper and the 1000 rupees sleeper right if you really have a problem economically if you want to join and really have a problem economically and if you want to say i want to pay it in two installment that's okay that's okay but don't everybody come and ask that guy it's a real headache and you know i, I hope you are aware up to this point i have done everything freely and in the online and that will be continued right the other people who are sitting for the next exam or whatever exam don't ever think since i'm starting this course that is not a reason for stopping that course this and that has nothing to do basically right so don't misunderstand in such a way right okay so that's about the right introduction that's about the introduction with that introduction we'll move on to the topic that is the integrated approach to cardiology just give me one second i just call up the Atila, you are in, no? You can, you can admit the people, right? Right, right. So coming to the integrated approach to cardiology, right? Integrated approach to cardiology. I'll start from the basic history, right? And we'll develop from the one of the very basic scenario, right? What we are coming across day to day life, right? Can you all hear, guys? Is everything is clear? Right? Okay, is it clear? Right? Right? Okay. Sorry. Right, fine, good. Right. So we talk about the basic scenario, right? We talk about a basic scenario. Right, which you come across day to day in the world. A 65 year old man is presenting with a severe central chest pain, right? And his chest pain is radiating to his left arm, right? And his ECG is showing evidence of myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction. So basically, if you understand right, what is happening here, that basically you finish off almost all of the cardiology if you understand this scenario right so coming to this we have to have some rough idea regarding the related anatomy right related anatomy if you look at the anatomy of the heart right i hope you are aware 
there are four chambers. There are four chambers. Starting from the right head VM, right ventricle, left head VM, and left ventricle. Right? So if you look at the right head VM, right? If you look at the right head VM. So we all know the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Both of that them opening into the right atrium. The both openings, right, are there in the right atrium. I just want you to remember only one point here, right? At the opening of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, we don't have a valve. There are no valves there. It's just an opening. It's just an opening, right? It's just an opening. This point is somewhat important to understand what is called jugular vena special later in medicine, right? Okay. And remember, guys, this is not a medicine class. This is a, all the stuff related to medicine before medicine. Now, from the right head VM, right? From the right head VM, okay? Right, right head VM. The blood which is coming from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. The blood what is coming from the superior vena cava, right? If you want, not it down, eh? Not it down. If you, if you can, otherwise you listen, doesn't matter, right? Right? The blood coming from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava will come to the right ventricle. Will come to the right ventricle. So between the right atrium and the right, right, right atrium and the right ventricle, there you have that tricuspid valve, right? There you have that tricuspid valve. Now what the right ventricle is right doing is it is contracting and it is pushing the blood into the pulmonary artery. It is pushing the blood into the pulmonary artery. Clear? Now, the blood is going to the pulmonary artery. Right now, the blood is going into the pulmonary artery. Right? So once it has gone into the pulmonary artery, we all know, right? We all know it is going to the lungs. It is going to the lungs. From the lungs, right? From the lungs, it is returning to the left side. Right, it is returning to the left side. That is the left atrium, via the four pulmonary veins. Right, it is returning to the left side via the four pulmonary veins. Right, okay. Now from the left atrium, it is coming to the left ventricle. It is coming to the left ventricle. Now left ventricle is contracting. Right, left ventricle is contracting. Left ventricle is contracting. Right, okay. Left ventricle is contracting and pushing the blood into the iota, right? It is contracting and pushing the blood into the iota, right? Okay. So from the iota, it is going to all over the body, right? It is going to all over the body, right? So if you further look into this anatomy, right? Further look into this anatomy. So this is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, what is going is the pulmonary artery, right? So if you look at this tricuspid valve, if you look at this tricuspid valve, the tricuspid valve is connected to these muscles, these small, small projections here. Can you see the cursor, guys? Send a message. Can you see the cursor? Right? This small, small, yeah, that's good. Okay. These small, small muscles, right? Small, small muscles, right? Small, small muscles. Via the right, via the structure called coda tendini, right? Coda tendini, right? So if you look at the left side, this is the left atrium, this is the left ventricle, right? This is the left ventricle. Here you have the mitral valve, okay? Here you have the mitral valve. Again, this mitral valve, the, again, this mitral valve, right? Again, this mitral valve is connected to the, right, this mitral valve is connected to the papillary muscles via this coda tendini. Understood? Right? But, you know, this is the pulmonary artery. This is the pulmonary artery, which is going from the right ventricle, which is going from the right ventricle. So at the pulmonary artery, we have the pulmonary valve. We have the pulmonary valve. This is the iota. At the opening of the iota, we have the aortic valve, right? But the point to remember, this pulmonary valve and aortic valve, they are not connected, right? They are not connected, right? They are not connected to the papillary muscles via coda tendini. Understood? They are not connected. So what is connected is, right? What is connected is, right? What is connected is, 
your mitral valve and tricuspid valve. Because this is important, guys. This is important, right? I'll tell you why, right? I'll tell you why. In the later in medicine, we study something called myocardial infarction, right? We we'll study one of the problem in the myocardial infarction is, right? One of the problem in the myocardial infarction is, right? Look here, look here, right? These papillary muscles, these papillary muscles, when there is a infarction, when there is a heart attack, right? When there is a heart attack, right? These papillary muscles, these papillary muscles can dysfunction, right? The function will be lost. Sometimes these papillary muscles, these papillary muscles will rupture. These papillary muscles will rupture. When the papillary muscle rupture, you know this coda tendine, right? Coda tendine, this structure is rupture. This structure is rupture. So there, I will talk in myocardial infarction later. That is the reason they are having some problem called this mitral valve problem in myocardial infarction. We study there something called mitral regurgitation. Understood? Are you okay up to that point? Right. So next, you imagine. Look here. We know this right ventricle. Right. We know this right ventricle is pushing the blood. Only to the lungs. Right ventricle is pushing the blood only to the lungs. Right, only to the lungs. Right, okay, only to the lungs. Since the right ventricle is pushing the blood only to the lungs, right, only to the lungs. Right, okay. Right ventricle is pushing the blood only to the lungs. Clear. The thickness of the right ventricle, the thickness of the right ventricle, right, thickness of the right ventricle is low. On the other hand. If you look at the left ventricle, right, left ventricle, right, left ventricle, left ventricle has to push the blood to all over the heart, all over the body, all over the body, right? Because aorta is the one which is pumping blood to all over the body. So it has to contract, it has to contract with a great force, great force, great force. So there, because of that, the left ventricular thickness is high. Left ventricular thickness is high. Understood? Clear? So why that is important? So here the thickness is high. Here the thickness is high. So if the muscle is high, you need more blood. You need more blood. Right? So whenever there is a decrease in the blood, that is going to affect the left side more than the right side. Clear? So the heart attacks or the myocardial infarctions are very common in the left side, right? Very common in the left side. Understood, right? That is some of the basic anatomy with this, right? Come I look here. If you look at the heart, right? If you look at the heart, it is no more the heart shape, guys. It is no more the heart shape, right? We know this is how the heart is looking, right? So if you look at this right side, if you look at this right side, okay? If you look, look at this right side, Sorry guys, because of the, the power cut has occurred and since it's a free thing, it's not a scheduled meeting. Scheduled meeting, even if there is a power cut or something, I can come back and join the same meeting. Right here, you can't join like that. The host will change. That's why I cut it and put it again. Sorry for that. Maybe there's raining outside. There's heavy raining outside. Anyway, that's fine. Look here. So if you look at the heart, let me look here. You, I want you to know, right? This is the right border. This is the right border of the heart. I want you to know this right border is formed by this, that is your right AV. That is your right AV, right? Okay, that is your right AV. So this is your right ventricle. This is your right ventricle. This right ventricle, right, is forming the inferior border. The right ventricle is forming the inferior border of the heart, right? Inferior border of the heart. Here, if you look at this inferior border, this inferior border is actually sitting on top of your diaphragm, right? This inferior border is sitting on top of the diaphragm, right? If you look at the left side, if you look at the left side, this left border, this left border is formed by the left ventricle, right? This left border, this yellow color line, is formed by the left ventricle. And here we have the great vessels, right? Here we have the great vessels, right? Here we have the great vessels. So is it important to know? Is it important to know? Yes, it is important. I will tell you why it's important. 
one reason guys look here this inferior border is sitting on the diaphragm right sitting on the diaphragm right the inferior surface of the heart as i showed here look here like this part this part this part this inferior surface of the heart is sitting on the diaphragm so why this is important why right? why this is important since the inferior border is sitting in the diaphragm like sometimes when there is a ischemia or infarction infarction to the inferior surface sometimes you will tell that as the pain is there in the epigastric region pain is there in the epigastric region clear epigastric region right okay now look come back here right you come back to this point right so right border is by the right atrium left border is by the what do you say left border is by the left ventricle right and the inferior border is by the right ventricle why it's important come on look here later when you get a chest x right when you get a chest x right so we do an x-ray right to look at the lungs and the heart so when you see the, see the image like this right you are going to see it like this you are going to see it like this this is how the chest x-ray is going to be so when you see this side when you see this border right when you see this border right i want you to understand this is the right atrium right right atrium when you see this this part i want you to understand this is the ascending aorta right when you see this part right you have to understand this is a superior vena cava right and when you see here this is the aortic arch this is the aortic arch aortic arch right when you see this you have to understand this is the left ventricle right and when you see this you have to understand right this is the diaphragm clear in other words in other words in other words what i am trying to say is right so basically tomorrow right basically tomorrow when you see the structure right basically tomorrow when you see the structure right when you see the structure right i want all of you right i want all of you right one second right i want all of you right to get an idea like this right right it won't be shown like that in the x-ray what the x-ray will show is this right but you are going to interpret like this right this anatomy should come to your mind this anatomy should come to your mind okay look here. now look at this guys so if you look at the layers of the heart right if you look at the layers of the heart okay so we know the outermost layer we know the outermost layer is the pericardium is a pericardium right so we have a fibrous pericardium we have the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium and the serous pericardium is divided into two that is the palatal pericardium and visceral pericardium so out very outermost you have a fibrous pericardium then here you have a palatal pericardium and here you have the visceral pericardium so in other words between these two layers between these two layers right between these two layers right of the pericardium there is a potential space there is a potential space where you can have fluid accumulation which you call as right which you call as pericardial effusion right which you call as what pericardial effusion right pericardial effusion right pericardial effusion right okay pericardial effusion fine guys look here now the problem is you know the heart is surrounded by this right space pericardial right space so if there is a fluid if there is a fluid into this space which we call as pericardial effusion at one point it can go right it can go and compress the heart right it can go and compress the heart when it compresses the heart when this fluid is compressed the heart the heart cannot fill right the heart cannot fill right the heart cannot fill if the heart cannot fill right if the heart cannot fill right if the heart cannot fill right there is no cardiac output the heart cannot pump the blood right that's what we study later in a condition called cardiac tamponading medicine so what we do is right when there is a lamai look here when there is a collection there 
when there is a collection there between the two pericardial surfaces, right? It should call as pericardial effusion. When that compresses the heart, we have to drain it, right? We have to drain it. Otherwise, you go and completely compress the heart, right? The process is called pericardiocentesis, right? The process is called pericardiocentesis. Actually, what do you do here, right? This is the sternum, right? This is the sternum. Right, this is the sternum. Right, this is your lower lower border of your rib cage. Rib cage. You are actually putting a needle.
Can you hear me? Yes, okay. I think we have a little bit of a bad weather today, right? Unfortunately, right. Is it okay on the YouTube as well? Just check the people who are it's okay on YouTube. Just check and let me know, guys. Is it okay on YouTube? Just send me a message. Yes, okay, fine, that's good, right? So, sorry guys, it's damn heavy raining outside, right? Right, okay. So, yeah, I stopped there, right? Fine. Yeah, it's on the same ID, you can do it, no? That's fine, right? Look here. So, fine, good. So now, after discussing about the pericardium, right? After discussing about the pericardium, right? Okay, right, good. After discussing about the pericardium, so we talk about the other layers, right? So the visceral pericardium is called the visceral pericardium is called the epicardium, epicardium, right? Then we have the myocardium and then the endocardium, right? Endocardium. So if you look at the blood supply, Right. If you look at the blood supply, the point I want you to understand, right? The point I want you to understand. If your blood, right, there's an outermost layer is the visceral pericardium, then you have the myocardium, then the innermost one is the endocardium, right? Innermost one is the endocardium, right? So I just want to tell you one important point here, right? The blood supply of the heart. Right, the blood supply of the heart is coming from outer epicardium towards the inner endocardium. The blood supply is coming from outer epicardium towards the inner endocardium, right? Okay, look here, guys. This is how the blood supply is coming. We know the outermost surface, right? The outermost surface, right, is the epicardium. This is the myocardium. This is the endocardium. This is the epicardium, this is the myocardium, this is the endocardium, understood? The blood supply is coming from the epicardium to endocardium, epicardium to endocardium through the myocardium, right? So this point is important. Why this point is important is, I mean, look here. When there is a, right, systole, when there is a systole, right? When there is a systole, okay? The, when the myocardium contracts, when the myocardium contracts, you can imagine, right? You can imagine when the myocardium contracts, that will constrict these vessels, right? That will constrict these vessels, right? That will constrict these vessels. So when these vessels are constricted, that is when? That is when? During systole, right? During systole. When these vessels are constricted, right? When these vessels are constricted, okay, I got me, right? When these vessels are constricted, this blood supply will be cut off or will be minimal during systole, right? Will be cut off or will be minimal during systole. In other words, am I look here? This is the endocardium. This is the endocardium, right? Just next to the endocardium, this myocardium is called subendocardial portion. This is called what? Sub-endocardial portion. Sub-endocardial portion, right? Sub-endocardial portion. So to this area, to this area, okay? To this area, right? To this area, there is an interruption of the blood supply during systole. Okay? Guys, are you okay? Yes or no? Right? Systole. So why it is important, guys? In other words, what I am trying to say is, this part of the heart, this subendocardial portion, this part of the heart, okay, this part of the heart is getting the blood supply mainly in diastole, right? It's getting the blood supply where? Mainly in what? Diastole, understood, right? I'll correlate that with physiology later, right? I'll correlate that with physiology, right, within a short time. Okay, right, look here, right? Now, if you look at the blood supply of the heart, 
right? If you look at the blood supply of the heart, okay? Blood supply of the heart, right? Look here, right? If you look at the blood supply of the heart, you know, right? You know, the heart is supplied by two coronary arteries, right? Two coronary arteries. That is the left coronary artery. Am I look here, right? Just listen to me, eh? Look here carefully. Left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. Left and the right coronary artery. Okay, left and the right coronary artery. Fine. So if you look at the coronary arteries, right? If you look at these coronary arteries, these coronary arteries, you, even here you can see, they start at the origin of the aorta, right? They start at the origin of the aorta, right? They start at the origin of the aorta. So actually at the origin of the aorta, there are three sinuses like this. There are three sinuses like this, right? Actually, right? So your right coronary artery is starting from the anterior aortic sinus and the left coronary artery is starting from the posterior aortic sinus, right? So in other words, what I want you to understand is the two coronary arteries, right? The two coronary arteries, okay? The two coronary arteries, are starting from the origin of the aorta. Once it has started here, right? This is how the left coronary artery comes, guys. Look here, left coronary artery comes. The initial part is called, right? This initial part is called left main coronary artery. The initial part is called left main coronary artery. Then this left main coronary artery, right? This left main coronary artery, right? is dividing into two, is dividing into two. One is this part, right? One is this part. This is the anterior interventricular artery. This is what? Anterior interventricular artery. The medical term for this, right? The medical term for this, we call this as left, right? Left anterior descending artery. Left anterior descending artery. This is supplying this area, right? This is supplying this area. Do you understand this, right? This is supplying this area. Say some part of the left ventricle, some part of the right ventricle, some part of the septum. This is supplying this area, right? That is, in other words, this left anterior interventricular artery. The other medical term for that is left anterior descending artery. Left anterior descending artery. Left anterior descending artery left anterior descending artery, right? Left anterior descending artery, right? Okay, so this is supplying this area, right? Fine. Now, then there is a branch going like this. It's going like a circle. So the name is left circumflex artery. This is the circumflex artery, clear? Circumflex artery. The circumflex artery is supplying blood to the lateral surfaces of the heart. The circumflex artery is supplying blood to the lateral surfaces of the heart, right? It is supplying blood to the lateral surfaces of the heart, right? It is supplying blood to the lateral surfaces of the heart, okay? It is supplying blood to these lateral surfaces of this heart. So what I want to understand, what I want you to understand is, like, look here, guys, when there is a blockage here, when there is an atherosclerosis here, this part will undergo right, infarction, there's decreased blood supply to this part, right? So we say in a left anterior descending artery, right, I will say this anterior part will undergo infarction. On the other hand, if you look at the circumflex artery, right, circumflex artery, right, the circumflex artery, this lateral surface of the heart, right, this lateral surface of the heart will undergo, right, will undergo infarction. This lateral surface of the heart will undergo infarction. Clear? Okay, guys. Right? Then we have the right coronary. Right coronary. The right coronary starts from the aorta, comes towards this, comes in this way. Here it gives a marginal artery, marginal artery, and it turns back to the inferior surface. Right? It turns back to the inferior surface. It turns back to the inferior surface. Right? it turns back to the inferior surface. And Lamai, look here. In most of the people, in most of the people, it goes back to the inferior surface 
and giving a branch here at the posteriorly, it is called posterior interventricular artery. Clear? Posterior interventricular artery. So if there is a blockage here in the right corner of the artery, you can understand this inferior surface will undergo infarction, right? This inferior surface will undergo infarction. Clear? This inferior surface will undergo infarction. Are you there, guys? Are you okay up to that point? Right, let me look here. So some of you may think, right, like look here, if there is a blockage here, this will undergo infarction. If there is a blockage here, this is undergoing infarction. What about these collaterals? What about these collaterals? So if there is a blockage here, can this artery has an impact? Actually, unfortunately, when it comes to heart, right? When it comes to heart, the collateral supply is minimal, right? The collateral supply is minimal, right? The, you don't have a good collateral supply. So if it is blocked, it's blocked, right? If it is blocked, it's blocked, right? That part will undergo infarction. We don't have a good collateral system, unfortunately, in the heart. Actually, that is a place you want good collaterals, but you don't have it. Understood, guys? Right? Look here. So if you look at this venous drainage, I will talk about that. This venous drainage, you don't have to know much at all about the venous drainage later in medicine. You don't have to know it. But I just want to say a simple point. This venous drainage, right? This venous drainage, that follows the artery, right? That follows the arteries, right? To a certain extent, that follows the artery. I'll tell again, look here, right? I will tell again, right? This I already discussed how these arteries are originated. How am I look here? I told you, right? The right corner of the artery, right? Right corner of the artery. That is the one, right? Right corner of the artery is the one. Okay, guys. Right corner of the artery is the one which is giving the posterior interventricular artery, right? Posterior interventricular artery. But actually, if you talk in real terms, that is in 90% of the people, right? That is in 90% of the people, right? Actually, in 10%, in 10%, the circumflex will go back, right? And give the posterior interventricular artery. So this 90% of the people where the right corner of the artery is giving the posterior interventricular artery, that is the one we are calling as, right? That is the one we are calling as right corner of the artery dominant, right? Right corner of the artery dominant. Clear, guys? Right? So this is what I said. The heart receives the blood supply from two corner of the arteries, right and left, right? So this is the same thing I told you. The left corner of the artery, right? I told you it's giving the left anterior descending branch and the left circumflex branch. Rarely in 10%, it will give the posterior descending branch, right? That is in rare 10%, right? On the other hand, right? If you look at the right, right, right is supplying the inferior surface of the heart, and that is mainly giving the posterior, right, interventricular artery, right? Clear, guys? Right. So if you look at the, right, if you look at the, the area supply, if you look at the area supply, you may remember from the picture we have seen again, left anterior descending supplies the right ventricle, left ventricle, and to a certain extent, the interventricular supply. Circumflex is supplying the left ventricle and the left area. Right corner of the artery, right corner of the artery is supplying the right atrium, SA node, and AV node. And the marginal branch is supplying the atrium and ventricle. And the posterior descending artery is supplying the inferior surface and the posterior aspect. People, why this is important is, right? Why this is important is, in other words, if this artery is blocked, these are the areas undergoing infarction. If this artery is blocked, these are the areas undergoing infarction. If the right corner of the artery is blocked, okay, right? SA node, AV node, there is a problem to the blood supply, right? You all know SA node and AV node are the, SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. That is the conduction system. That's how the heart impulse is going. Cardiac impulse is going. But if they, when there is a right corner of the artery block, that is affected. That's why they get heart blocks. That's why they get what? Heart blocks. Clear? Understood? Yes or no? Right, look here. Right? 
Okay. So this is why I said you, although there are anastomosis, the anastomosis is poor, right? Anastomosis is poor. So usually when there is a thrombosis, blockage in one of the arteries, that will look, go to the infarction. Clear? Right. I might look here. Now, when somebody has a chest pain, when somebody has a chest pain, right? Or whenever there is a ischemia to the heart, right? How do you know patient will come, doctor, doctor, there is a chest pain, right? Doctor, doctor, the pain is going here. The pain is going here. So you are worried this is an ischemia to the heart. So how do you want to test for that? You are going to do an ECG. Right, you are going to do an ECG. So if you look at the ECG, let me look here. We want to know what is the artery involved? Where is the block? Is the block is here? Is the block is here? Is the block is here? Right, we want to know that. And you know, right, people, you are aware, right? If the block is here, this area will undergo infarction, isn't it? Right, if the block is here in the left anterior descending, this area will undergo infarction. If the block is here, this area will undergo infarction. If the block is here, this area will undergo infarction. Clear? So this area will undergo, this area will undergo. If the block is here, this will undergo. Then how do you pick up? How do you pick up? So when we do the ECG, guys, right? When we do the ECG, you might have seen we are putting some leads in the chest. We are putting some leads in the chest, right? We'll talk about the leads later in medicine. We put the leads, right, at different names. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, right? We put the leads with different names, different names, okay? We put the leads with different names, right? These leads are, let me look here, V1 is here, right? In the fourth intercostal space, just right to the sternum, right? V2 is here, fourth intercostal space left to the sternum. V3 is here, V4 is here, V5 is here, V6 is here. Clear? So in other words, if you look in a broad picture, in a 3D, these leads, let me look here, are right, this is the heart, right? Just imagine this is the heart. This is the blood supply. These are the ECG leads, right? These are the ECG leads, right? These leads are, Right? These leads are looking at the heart at different angles. These leads are looking at the heart at different, different angles. So V1 and V2 is looking this way. It is looking this way. This 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 V8, V9 is looking posterior. Right? V8, V9 is looking what? Posterior. So these leads are looking at the heart at different angles, clear? So if you look here, V1, V2 is looking at the septum of the heart. V3 is looking at the anterior surface of the heart. V4 is looking at the anterior surface of the heart. V5, V6 is looking at the lateral surface of the heart. Lead 2, lead 3, AVF, they are looking at the inferior surface of the heart, clear? So when you do an ECG, when you do an ECG, what the ECG is doing is, ECG is looking at the heart from different, different angles. ECG is looking at the heart from the different, different angles. Understood? So when you are doing, looking at the ECG, right? Okay. If you look at the lead 2, 3 AVF, right? Lead 2, 3 AVF. Look here, guys. This is the lead 2. This is look at the inferior surface of the heart. This is the lead 3. <laughs> This is looking at the inferior surface of the heart. This is the AVF. This is looking at the inferior surface of the heart. Understood? So when you do an ECG, when you do an ECG, okay? When you do an ECG, right? Okay. If the problem, if the changes are there in the inferior surface of the heart, right? I will see the changes in the lead two, three AVF, right? When I see the changes, I know this is an inferior MI, right? The problem is in the inferior surface. Then my anatomy will tell me, right, oh, inferior surface, inferior surface is supplied by the right corner of the artery, right? Inferior surface is supplied by the right corner of the artery. My ECG is showing, right, 
there is a problem in the interior surface so i will direct the problem is in the right corner clear understood yes or no just send a message guys yeah yes or no you got it yeah this is something important right then you know the problem is in the right corner yeah so when i know the problem is in the right corner yeah right when i know the problem is in the right corner yeah i am worried because right right when the problem is in the right corner yeah right i am worried because right just now i have studied right the interior surface is supplying the right corner yeah that's true right but i have studied right corner yeah is supplying the sa node and av node right sa node and av node right so now i am worried oh there is a change in the interior surface there is a problem in the right corner artery so i will anticipate right whether a problem might occur to sa node and av node clear or there is a problem in the blood supply to the conduction system of the heart right so now my medicine will tell me okay this patient is having a problem in the interior surface that's what ecg is saying right so right so there is a right corner artery i have to be careful he can go into heart block right he can go into heart blocks clear that's how you apply the anatomy so as i already said okay guys as i already said right you may remember this venous drainage of the heart right venous drainage of the heart right you don't have to know much about the venous drainage right it just simply follows the artery and the major veins are opening into the right atrium right right atrium the rest of the right venous drainage right they are having small veins small veins which directly open into the cardiac cavity right cardiac cavity clear right look here now let me look here right from that we we'll move on to the nerve supply so if you look at the nerve supply of the heart right if you look at the nerve supply of the heart right so nerve supply we have a sympathetic supply and a parasympathetic supply right if you look at the sympathetic supply right sympathetic nerve supply what it does right what it does is it increases the heart rate right it increases the heart rate it increases the contractility it increases the contractility on the other hand if you look at the parasympathetic supply right parasympathetic supply that is doing the opposite to this that reduces the heart rate right that reduces the heart rate right reduces the heart rate right okay right now if you look at the sympathetic supply guys right sympathetic supply the sympathetic supply to the heart right sympathetic supply to the heart that is from the thoracic segment right that is from the thoracic segment right that is from the thoracic segment right right t1 to t5 that is from the thoracic segment t1 to t5 right that is from the thoracic segment t1 to t5 right that is important right that is important that is from the thoracic segment t1 to t5 right okay the parasympathetic supply to the heart right parasympathetic supply to the heart clear the parasympathetic supply to the heart that is coming from the vagus right that is coming from the vagus right that is coming from the vagus right now lamai look here look here now the sympathetic supply is from the t1 to t5 right sympathetic nerves t1 right thoracic segments t1 to t5 these are the nerves which are carrying the cardiac pain right these are the nerves which are carrying the cardiac pain these are the nerves which are carrying the cardiac pain okay which are carrying the cardiac pain now right now okay which are carrying the cardiac pain later we'll study in neurology right in the our body you know the hand pays everywhere say when you touch you feel no when you touch you feel right when you touch you feel because our body has different sensory dermatomes our body has different sensory dermatomes right for example this is t1 this is t2 this is t2 right so when you touch here when you have a pain here when you have a pain here 
that will go to the T1 dermatome. That will go to the T1 dermatome. When you touch here, that will go to the T2. That is, go via the T2. Right? That will go via the T2. Understood? Go via the T2. Right? So, right, why it's important? Right? Right. Why it's important is, guys, look here. When you have a pain due to a ischemia to the heart, Right? When you have a pain due to the ischemia of the heart, we know, we may have heard, the pain is referred to this area. The pain is referred to this area. The pain is referred to this area. Right? The pain is referred to this area. What is this area? This is the medial surface of the arm and forearm. Right? Medial surface of the arm and forearm. Clear? Okay? Medial surface of the arm and form. You lie with me? In other words, let me look here. I told you, right? I told you, right? I told you. Okay, I tell me. I told you. This cardiac pain, right? This cardiac pain, this cardiac pain, right? Is carried by the T1 to T5 sympathetic supply. This cardiac pain is carried by the T1 to T5 sympathetic supply. Right? Okay. Similarly, come I look here. If you have a pain here in this dermatome, in this dermatome, that also carried by the T1 to T5 sensory nerves. That is also carried by the T1 to T5 sensory nerves. Clear? T1 to T5 sensory nerves. Okay? Now look here. Right? Now look here. Now, what is happening is this cardiac pain also will come to the spinal cord. Cardiac pain also will come to the spinal cord, right? This, if there is a pain from this medial side of the arm and forearm, that also will come to the spinal cord at the same level, at the same level, right? Later we will study, people, later we will study, in the spinal cord, there are spinal nerves, there are spinal nerves, spinal nerves. If you look at the spinal nerve, this is a spinal nerve, yeah? this is a spinal nerve. It has an anterior root, right? It has an anterior root and it has a posterior root. It has an anterior root and it has a posterior root. Those two join and form the spinal nerve, right? Now, this cardiac pain also will come in this way to here, right? This T1 to T2 pain also will come in this way here. Clear will come in this way here. Understood? Right? So, what is happening is, what do you mean by the word referred pain? Right? What do you mean by the word referred pain? When the pain is originating from the heart, 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 that pain is, that pain is felt, right? That pain is felt, right? at the medial side of the arm and forearm. Come I look here. Because both, if there is a pain in the, right, if there is a pain, right, in the T1, T2 dermatome, that is also going to the medial surface of the arm and forearm, right? If there is a pain, so that is also going to the T1, T2, right? If there is a cardiac pain, that is also going to the same root, right? Are you me? Yes or no? Right? Normally, from where do you get the pain? I mean, a normal person, it is common to have a pain from the skin. No, it is common to have a pain from the heart. It is common to have a pain from the skin, right? The skin is undergoing trauma again and again. The skin is undergoing trauma again and again. So we usually have a pain from the skin, right? Rather than the heart. Now, right? Look here, guys. Right now, the pain from the heart, the pain from the heart, as well as the pain from the T1, T2 dermatome, that is your medial side of the arm and forearm, right? Both are coming through the same road. Both, are, sorry, just say there are two vehicles coming through the same road, right? Two vehicles coming to the same road, right? Okay. So two vehicles are going to the same place, that is the brain. Two vehicles are coming, going to the same place, that is your brain. But until yesterday, right? Brain has got vehicles only from the skin. Right? The brain has got impulse only from the skin. 
So now it is to the same root, it is to the same root, what you get, what you get is the pain from the heart, right? It's a pain from the heart. But what the brain will think is, right? I usually get it from the skin, no? So this should come from the skin, right? This should come from the skin. So the brain will think this pain is coming from the T1, T2 dermatome, right? That's why they feel pain along the medial side of the arm and forearm, right? Right? So this is again showing you the pathway, right? Showing you the pathway. Right, this is how the referred pain occurs. Clear, guys? Understood? Are you okay up to that point? Yes or no? Send a message. Right? Right, look here. Now, after that, after that anatomy, right, after that anatomy, I just want to tell a few words about the embryology of the cardiac development, right? When it comes to the embryology of the heart, right? When it comes to the embryology of the heart, right? I, what the point, right? The point I want to tell, the point I want to tell, I want you, right, to remember something, right? It's good to know something about the atrial septal development. Atrial septal development. Understood? Atrial septal development. Come on, look here. Right? Are you okay up to this point? Shall I move on? Right, look here. Right, this is embryology. Right? Look here, guys. Now, in the anatomy we know, right? In the anatomy we know, right? In the anatomy we know, there is a right atrium, there is a left atrium. Between the right atrium and left atrium, we had a septum. Right? We had a septum. Right, we had a septum. Right, that's the atrial septum. That's what he studied initially at the early part. Right, atrial septum, ventricular septum. Now, how this is coming? How this is coming? Now, I look here. Initially, these two are like one cavity. Right, in the initial stage, these two are one cavity. This is just one cavity. Right, this is one cavity. Right, now what is happening is, right, just say, imagine this is one room. Right, a few people keep the videos on, eh? But from the next cloud, if I am doing the paid session, right, all should keep the videos on, cameras on, eh? And you can't join via the YouTube. You have to join via the Zoom only. Only today the YouTube is allowed since it's a free class. I don't mind. Right, look here, guys. Are you there with me? Now what is happening is, right? So this is one cavity. From the roof, right? From the roof, right? From the roof. Come I look here. From the roof. Roof of the cavity, right? You there is a wall starting to form, right? There is a wall starting to form like this from the roof of the cavity, right? So the wall, what is starting to form here, right? Starting to form here, it is called septum primum. It is called what? Septum primum, right? Septum primum. Here we have a structure called, at this point we have a structure called endocardial cushions. How do you call that? Endocardial cushion. Now what the septum primum will do is, the septum primum will grow downwards towards this. Clear? Septum primum will grow downwards towards the endocardial cushion. So when it grows like this, when it grows like this, when it grows like this, right? There is a gap here. There is a gap here. This gap is called ostium primum. This gap is called what? Ostium primum. Ostium primum. Okay. Ostium primum. Idea. So later in medicine, we study atrial septal defect can be ostium primum or second, right? So when I say the atrial septal defect can be ostium primum or septum, right? Second, what I mean is this, right? I can't teach this there, guys. So in that case, you have to do the ERPM course for one year, right? Can't do it there. Right? I will just say there's ostium primum defect. 
right even without knowing that doesn't matter right whether you come for this course or not you will pass the yapm there's nothing to do like that but you will look different as simple as that right look here now there is a defect ostium point now this endocardial cushions am i look here look here look here look here right from here this is that you know from here it will go up from here it will go up go up it will go up it will go up right and close the ostium prime right it will go up and close the ostium prime right right that gap is closed that gap is closed right if there is a problem with that then you have a septal defect right that is a ostium prime am is the atrial septal defect now by the time this gap is closed by the time this gap is closed in the upper part of the septum prime right in the upper part of the septum prime you like that me right because embryology lot of people are not very can right they don't like embryology much right in the upper part of the septum prime here right there is a destruction of the septum right there is a destruction of the septum okay right now there is a right there are small small holes appearing there are small small holes appearing that is called ostium secundum that is holds what ostium secundum ostium secundum understood right okay ostium secundum now just now we closed one side just now we closed one side right just now we close one side by the time we close one side now another problem coming right right another problem come right that is called what ostium second right now look here now to close that guys look at this look at this look at this now to close that another part is forming we have another wall another wall is coming here right another wall is forming from here to here right another wall is forming from here to here that we call as septum second right that is we call as septum second right another wall is forming from here to here that we call as what septum come on guys tell second septum second right septum second right septum second understood septum second now am i look here this wall am i look here eh? this wall right can you see here can you see here right it is not a complete wall it is not a complete wall right it is not a complete wall right so if i look if you look here this wall is like this guys right you can go like this through this passage you can go like this can you see a small gap here yes or no right through this passage you can go like this right there is a passage that is the passage you are calling as oval foramen that's a passage you are calling as what oval foramen clear that is a passage you are calling as foramen ovale that's a passage you are calling as what foramen ovale right that's a passage you are calling as what foramen ovale clear am i look here i dare me right this green color one this green color one this green color one is septum second this green color one is septum second clear this green color one is septum second clear so what do you see by the red here ah uh, the previous septum prima previous septum prima right that act as a valve now that act as a valve clear guys but there is a passage here there is a passage here right that's what you call as what foramen ovale foramen ovale oval foramen clear now what is going to happen is guys right now what is going to happen is clear this is how the heart is here right when you are born when you are born the lung circulation will start right when you are born the lung circulation will start right the lung circulation will start when the lung circulation will now i look here look carefully here. this is something i mean important and this is something we don't understand much in the university lung circulation will start 
when the lung circulation starts, I tell me, the pressure in the left side will increase. Right? This pressure in the left side will increase. When the pressure in the left side increases, this will push the wall here like this. This will push the wall here like this. This will push it here like this. Right? This will push it here. I mean, look here. It's like this, guys. Right? These two walls are here like this, not like two walls. And there is a gap here. This will be pushed like this. Right? This will be pushed like this. And the defect is closed. Clear? And the defect is closed. Clear? This is what happens. Right? This is what happens. Right? This is what happens in a normal person. Right? This is what happens in a normal person. So whenever there is a problem, whenever there is a problem, whenever there is a problem, you, what you can have is, you, this foramen will be patent. This foramen will be patent. That's what you call as patent foramen ovale. That's what you call as what? Patent foramen ovale. Right? So later in medicine, we study patent foramen ovale, PFO. What do you mean? This? Right, clear? So if you know that much of embryology from here, that is enough, right? Now I go to the related physiology, right? I'll go to the physiology, clear? So coming to the physiology, are you okay after this guys? I give you one minute to react, right? Are you okay? You also are watching in the YouTube, also send me a message in the YouTube, right? Just to see whether you're okay after this. Right. Right. Okay. Fine. Look here. We'll move on to the physiology. Coming to the physiology of the heart. Right. Coming to the physiology of the heart. Right. Uh, what I'm going to talk is I want to start from the heart sound. Heart sound. Right. Heart sound. And later I will move on to the cardiac cycle, right? I will move on to the cardiac cycle, right? And later I will move on to the physiology or the pathophysiology of the heart failure. If you look at the heart sound, right? We all know the heart sound, right? The heart sound. It is due to closure of the heart valves. It's due to closure of the heart valves. It's actually it's produced by the vibration of the valves when they are closing, right? And we are basically talking about two heart sounds, first and the second sound. And there are some added sounds, third sound and the fourth sound as well, third and the fourth as well. Right. If you look at the first sound, right? If you look at the first sound, that is due to the closure of the, right? That is due to the closure of the AV valves, clear? That is due to the closure of the atrioventricular valves. In other words, that is due to the closure of the, right? That is due to the closure of the, okay? That's due to the closure of the, right? Mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. Let's do the closure of the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. If you look at the second sound, right? If you look at the second sound, right? That is due to the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves, right? That is due to the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valve, right? Right? The aortic and pulmonary valve, okay? When you are expirating, Right, when you are on expiration, this aortic and pulmonary valve will close at the same time. Will close at the same time. So you will not recognize that as two sound. What you recognize is you recognize that as only one sound. Right? Recognize that as only one sound. Understood? Clear? But during inspiration, aortic valve is closing slightly before the pulmonary valve, right? Arctic valve is closing slightly below, before the pulmonary valve. In other words, guys, so in second sound, when it comes to the inspiration, it's A2, aortic valve closure, followed by pulmonary valve closure, right? It is A2P2, 
right? A two P two. Why this happening is, guys? You know the iota, right? Iota, the iota, the blood is pumped to all over the heart. The blood is pumped to all over the heart, all over the heart, right? All over the heart, right? So because of that, there is high pressure in the iota, right? There is high pressure in the iota. There is high pressure in the iota. Clear? This because of the high pressure in the iota that will shut down the valve quickly, right? That will shut down the valve quickly, right? That will shut down the valve quickly, right? It will shut down the valve quickly, right? Right? Okay. Fine. If there any issues with the Zoom, you can join me the YouTube, eh? Only for today. Right? Okay. Fine. Right? In addition, guys. Right? In addition, right? Sometimes there are third heart sound and the fourth heart sound. Sometimes there are third heart sound and the fourth heart sound, right? Third heart sound, right? And the fourth heart sound, right? Okay. If you look at the third heart sound, that is occurring in the one third of the diastole, right? One third of the diastole, right? Why there is a third heart sound? It is due to the rapid ventricular filling, rapid ventricular filling. It can be normal, right? It can be normal. It is not always abnormal, right? It is not always abnormal. It can be normal. On the other hand, sometimes we have another additional sound, right? Another additional sound. That is the fourth heart sound. Fourth heart sound. Clear? Yeah. Which occurs immediately before the first sound, right? Which occurs immediately before the first sound, right? Okay, immediately before the first sound, and when it comes to the S four fourth heart sound or S four, that is always pathological. Clear? That is always pathological, right? That occurs. That occurs, right? When you are ventricularly stiff, right? When you are ventricularly stiff. For example, right in conditions there can be hypertrophy of the ventricle, right? There can be hypertrophy of the ventricle. Where the ventricle is stiff, there you can hear the S4. Right? Okay. Fine. Right? That's a little bit of introduction about the heart sound. Right? Right. Okay. Coming to the cardiac cycle. Right? Coming to the cardiac cycle. Right? I mean, look here. We are dividing the cardiac cycle into two main things, right? Two main things. One is the systole, other one is the diastole. One is a systole, other one is the diastole. So if you look at the heart, initially there is a current. I will talk about it as the next thing. The current will go from SA node to AV node. AV node to the His bundle, His bundle to the Perkinji fibers. So once there is a current, electrical activity, after that, there is a mechanical activity. After that, there is a mechanical activity. Clear? Okay. After that, there is a mechanical activity. Okay, fine. Look here. Right? So it's an electrical activity followed by a mechanical activity. It's a conduction followed by Convection, right? Followed by convection. Look here. So we are further dividing these, right? We are further dividing these into late diastole, atrial systole, isovolumetric ventricular contraction, ventricular ejection, isovolumetric ventricular relaxation, and early diastole, right? We are further dividing into various things, right? Right. Look here. Now, I'll tell in my words what's going to happen. Right? What is happening in diastole is, right? What is happening in diastole is, let me look here. If you look at this right side, right? If you look at this right side, blood is coming from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava 
to the light AD, right to the light AD. Here we have the blood, here we have the blood, right? We have the blood, which has come from the four pulmonary veins, four pulmonary veins, clear? What is happening in late diastole is, right? What is happening in late diastole is, right? What is happening in late diastole is, okay. This valve is open. What is this valve? Tricuspid valve, isn't it? This is a right atrium, this is a right ventricle, this is a tricuspid valve. This valve is open. This valve is open, right? Right, this is the mitral valve. This valve is open, right? But this valve, what is this valve? Pulmonary valve. This valve, what is this valve? What is this valve? Aortic valve. These two are closed. These two are closed. Initially, what is happening is the blood here will just come, will just come to the ventricle without anything, just passively feel flow down, right? Without anything, just passively, the blood will flow down to the ventricle, right? Without anything, the passively, the blood is going to come to the ventricle. Clear? So from the blood, right, from the blood, which has come, which is already there in the area, initially, 70% of the blood will just flow down to the ventricle without any contraction of the area, right? This is just a passive process, right? This is just a passive process, right? This is just a passive process. Understood? This is just a passive process. Clear? Now, now 70% has come here, no? Now 70% has come here. Right, seventy percent has come here. Right now, what is there? How much is left there? Thirty percent. Right, thirty percent is left there. Thirty percent is left there. Now, what will happen is right now. What will happen is clear. Initially, the blood which is there in the area, right? Initially, the blood which is there in the area, the seventy percent just came came passively. It's like this. It just came passively. Now, the area will contract. Right, area will contract and push that 30%, right? And push that 30%, right? That is what you call as atrial systole, right? That is what you call as what? Atrial systole, atrial systole. Clear? Atrial systole. It's a systole to atria. Am I look here? It's a systole to atria. For the ventricle, ventricle is contracting now. Ventricle is not contracting now, right? It's a systolic to it's a systole to what? Advia, but still the ventricle is not contracting. So the ventricle, it is still diastole, right? For the ventricle, it's still diastole. For the ventricle, it is still diastole. Clear? Come on, look here, look here. Now, initially 70% has come passively, right? Initially 70% has come passively. Just some other people also keep the videos on, guys, please. Right? So you can't join the next time onwards if you are not keeping the videos on. Today is the first day, as I say, it's okay. Right? Look here. So initially, 70% has come down just passively. Then the ADVI is contracting and pushing the 30%. Now, everything has come to the what? Ventricle. Right? Everything has come to the ventricle. Right? Now, once everything has come to the ventricle, right? Once everything has come to the ventricle, right? Once everything has come to the ventricle, right? Right, this valve will close. What is this valve? What is this valve? Tricuspid valve and the other side, it is the mitral valve, right? This valve is closed, clear? This valve is closed. Now the ventricle is filled. Now the ventricle is filled. Are you there with me, guys? Now the ventricle is filled, understood? Now the ventricle is filled. This is what we call as the volume now. The volume now, the volume in the ventricle now, this is what we are going to call in physiology as end diastolic volume, right? We are going to call in physiology as end diastolic volume. Clear? End diastolic volume. Clear? End diastolic volume. Are you okay? Right? Now look here, guys. Now look here. Right? This is a damn important, right? Area. Now, come I look here. This valve is closed. This valve is closed, right? Your tricuspid valve is closed. Your mitral valve is closed. 
So I cuspid valve is closed, mitral valve is closed, right? This valve is closed, this valve is closed. But we know, right? But we know, right? But we know there is already a pressure in the aorta, right? Already a pressure in the aorta, right? Already a pressure in the aorta. Now what is going to happen is, now you are ventricles going to contract, right? Ventricles going to contract. Right, it is starting to contract. Right now, when we when the ventricle is starting to contract, the pressure in the ventricle is going to increase. The pressure in the ventricle is going to what? Increase. When the ventricle is starting to contract, the pressure in the ventricle is going to increase. Clear? Now, am I look here? Look here. Now, ventricle is going to contract. No. Now, this valve is closed. This valve is closed. This valve is closed. This valve is closed. Now the ventricle is going to, I just talk about the left side now, same to the right side, yeah? same to the right side, right? Same to the right side. I'm just telling for the left side for an example. Now the ventricle is going to contract and should increase the pressure inside to open the what? This aortic valve, right? Increase the pressure inside to open the aortic valve, aortic valve, right? Increase the pressure inside to open the aortic valve, open the aortic valve. Clear? Until you open that valve, right? Until you increase the pressure and open this valve. Understood? In the initial part of the ventricular system, A, this is closed, this is closed. This is closed, this is closed. Everything is closed. Everything is closed. Now the ventricle is contracting to increase the pressure to open this valve. Until you open this valve, right? The ventricle will contract as, uh, right? Ventricle will contract as a closed chamber, right? When they will contract, contract as a closed chamber. It's a closed room. It's a closed room, right? Right, closed room. So if it is a closed room, right, closed room, you know the volume is not changing, right? It's a closed room, no? So you just imagine you are in a room, all the doors are closed, right? Volume is not changing. So this initial part of this ventricular, right? This initial part of this ventricular systole is called isovolumetric ventricular convection. Right? Isovolumetric ventricular convection. Okay, guys. Okay. Right? Ventricular convection. Are you okay up to that point? Yes or no? Right? Now, ventricular pressure is increasing, increasing, increasing. At one point, the left ventricular pressure is more than the pressure in the iota. Right? At one point, the left ventricular pressure is more than the pressure in the iota. If you look at the other side, if you look at this side, the right ventricular pressure, the right ventricular pressure is more than the pressure in the pulmonary artery. Right? Okay? Pulmonary artery. Now, at that point, ventricle will push and open this valve. Right? At that point, ventricle will push and open this valve. Right, ventricle will push and open this valve. Understood, open this valve. Clear? Later, once the classes have started this proper program, next, that is on next Friday, eh? I will start on next Friday, depending on your feedback today, right? Whether you think it's good or bad, right? Once I start at, in case if you missed due to unavoidable circumstances, you will be given opportunities to, right, watch that again, eh? Those things will be done. Right, but the camera should be on, like the same surgery program. Right, camera should be on. Right, and you will have to log in with the details we are giving. Right, those things I will give it today or tomorrow, provided looking at your response. If you think this is useless, I will stop it. That's simple as that. Right, right. There's nothing to do, no. So this is a headache, guys. This is you can teach medicine without any issues. Right, at any time, even medicine, even if you ask me to teach any other final year subject, I can teach without anything. Right, but when it comes to this one. Just to pick up the very important embryology, very important histology, right? Very important pharmacology, pathology, and making it into one is difficult, right? And actually, I have been thinking about it for a very long time, right? It's like this when we are student also, when you go to the finals, we always say, sir, we forget everything, right? We have forgotten everything. I don't remember the pharmacology. And the same things when I started teaching, my students are telling, so I don't remember the pharmacology, right? Our basics are not good, right? Our basics are not good, right? So there are enough videos, you know, for example, there's a great video by Dr. Najib, right? He can teach anything basically, right? He can teach anything. So I can't 
but he said copy najib and make a video here la then that you can look at najib directly right so right but again what they are doing is they are teaching everything right the basic the pop right so they are teaching everything so what i try to do is that is not going to help for the right you just take the 10% or the 20% from every area and make it into one right make it into one right actually just to design this course guys right i even watched right how the steve jobs launched each of his project right right every products right just to see how the fellow has thought right so it took a basically to just to think about this different pain it talk about it took me for about one hour to design that right so that's the thing i don't know the right it's a 10 class 10000 i can't cut down the price because it's useless for me and i know you can understand it basically has everything right if there is any issue let me know i can just give some installments or anything if i start the course as simple as that right okay right anyway you give me a feedback after that right in the what do you say whatsapp as well as in the don't send it here whatsapp and the what do you say this one whatsapp and the uh but messenger facebook right don't send it here can no time to read here right okay look here now once the pressure has increased right once the pressure has increased right once the pressure had increased right once the pressure had increased right at one point right at one point right here the pressure will increase and open this valve open this valve in the left side so that is the point your blood is going into the aorta right that is the point the blood is going into the pulmonary artery and that's what you call as ejection right ejection is what pumping out right in the initial part nothing is pumping out everything is closed you call it as isovolumetric contraction now you are telling right now you are telling right okay now the heart is going to eject right so left ventricle is ejecting into the aorta and the right ventricle is ejecting into the pulmonary artery and this part we are calling this part of the systole you are going to call as the ejection systole right okay ejection systole right okay then there comes a word there comes a word in every heart beat right every cardiac cycle every cardiac cycle every heart beat the amount of blood ejected by amount of blood ejected during every cycle by the what do you say each systole by each ventricle we use the word that's what we call in physiology called stroke volume right we call it called what stroke volume okay guys are you okay up to that point we call that as stroke volume right right that's what we call as stroke volume because heart is now ejecting right so the amount of blood ejected by the ventricle during systole right during systole right okay fine look then later right after that later right after that later right after that later right your ventricle both valves are closed again the valves are closing right because the, now the ventricular pressure is coming down right your valves are closing the valves are closing right so now the ventricle is starting to relax 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 right relax right so you call it as isovolumetric relaxation right okay relaxation if there are any blood remaining at this condition right if there are if there is after the systole after the systole after the systole if there is some blood remaining right you call it as end systolic volume right end systolic volume right you call it as end systolic volume right later when it comes to medicine right when it comes to medicine i will teach you in some valvular heart disease right i will teach you in valvular heart disease there are conditions they are the end systolic volume is increased right there are conditions where the end systolic volume is increased right increase right end systolic volume is increased right okay so those are abnormal right those are abnormal how does it occur we'll talk there in medicine right that is not the scope of this class right ah this is a simple thing i will talk about this in medicine so i'm not going to tell it here right This is the actually the graph. Why right? we will talk about it is the JVP in medicine. Right, is not needed at this moment. Right, let me look here. Now the next important point. 
right so right okay coming to the systole and diastole right okay when the heart rate increases right listen to me yeah we'll come back i'll come back to the slide later when the heart rate increases say i guide me am i look here right now we say heart rate is 60 heart rate is 60 right 60 so there is 60 beats per minute 60 beats per minute heart rate is 100 so it's 100 beats per minute heart rate is 180 right 180 beats per minute if the when the heart rate increases right when the heart rate increases clear what will happen to the duration of uh, each cardiac cycle what will happen to the duration of the each cardiac cycle am i in one right right in one right okay so 1 minute 60 beats right 1 minute 60 beats right 1 minute 100 beats 1 minute 200 beats so when the heart rate increases you can understand the duration of each cardiac cycle will what decrease isn't it decrease right so now just now we have studied right just now we have studied right just now we have studied each cardiac cycle there are two things right each cardiac cycle there are two things right two things what are the two things right what are the two things right okay what are the two things there is a systole and there is a diastole right there is a systole and there is a diastole there is a systole and there is a diastole understood right so now the total duration of the cardiac cycle is going to decrease right the total duration of the cardiac cycle is going to decrease if the total duration of the cardiac cycle is going to decrease just now we study there is a systole and diastole in the cardiac cycle understood now my look here look here look here look here right right this is how the physiology we should be taught guys right so we are unable to remember the physiology because we are not taught in a relevant manner very simple as that not only yeah all over the world is like that now look here so if you look at this systole and diastole when the cardiac cycle shortens when the cardiac cycle shortens the duration of the systole is relatively constant right the duration of the systole is not going to change the duration of the systole is not going to change so what is going to change is right what is going to change is it is the duration of the diastole that is going to decrease right it is the duration of the diastole that is going to decrease understood guys right okay duration of the diastole that is going to decrease am i look here look here look here right now why it is important why it is important am i look here in the next slide in the next slide i will tell you there is something called cardiac output right i will tell you there is something called cardiac output right i will tell you there is something called cardiac output okay right in a within a few minutes i will tell you there is something called cardiac output right what is the cardiac output is this is the output of the each ventricle this is the output of the each ventricle per minute time right it is the output of the each ventricle per minute time right output of the each ventricle per minute time right i am going to tell there is something called cardiac cycle right i guide me so actually what is cardiac cycle is let me look here what is cardiac cycle is stroke volume stroke volume right stroke volume multiplied by heart rate stroke volume multiplied by what heart rate stroke volume multiplied by heart rate understood what is stroke volume that is just now we learned what is stroke volume the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle per beat each ventricle per beat let me look here look here look here look here right what the ventricle is going to pump 
what is the what is what is it going to pump whatever the blood that is there isn't it i there i there guys right whatever the blood which is there at the end diastolic volume end diastolic end diastolic whatever the blood which is there at the end of diastole that is the blood the right okay that is the blood the ventricle is going to pump that you can understand right if there is no blood at the end of diastole what are you going to pump understood right you can pump the air no guys right whatever the blood what is there at the end of diastole that is the blood your ventricle is going to pump you know that's what it has right that's what it has understood so can i tell you like this your stroke volume is proportional to, right your stroke volume is proportional to what volume in diastolic volume that's a law that's a law your stroke volume is proportional to what come on look here in diastolic volume are you okay with that in diastolic volume right this is where the physiology come guys otherwise you don't have to study physiology now look here i told you right i told you right when the heart rate increases systole is relatively constant right systole is relatively constant right what is where do you see the diastole right what is where do you see the diastole okay is the diastole important right is the diastole important from what i have taught you up to this point right from what i have taught you up to this point is the diastole important yes or no yes why important why it's important just now i told you the blood supply to the sub endocardial portion blood supply to the sub endocardial portion blood supply to the sub endocardial portion right sub endocardial portion occurs during diastole am i do you remember what i told yes or no right in the anatomy right yeah i told you no this part blood supply is occurring only during what diastole right so when the heart rate increases right when the heart rate increases right when the heart rate increases diastole shortens diastole shortens by right? diastole shortens so blood supply to the sub endocardial portion is reduced right blood supply to the sub endocardial portion is reduced so what happened sub endocardial portion sub endocardial portion right sub endocardial portion will undergo ischemia sub endocardial portion will undergo ischemia understood yes or no right yes or no clear guys right now look here now look here now right right are you there with me clear now look here guys is very important look here now what is happening in diastole what is happening in diastole one is that problem i had discussed your heart is filling isn't it your heart is filling your heart is filling isn't it your heart is filling so if the diastole is shortened right if the diastole is shortened right if the diastole is short clear if the diastole is shortened right if the diastole is shortened the time for the heart to fill right your time for the heart to fill i mean look here look here don't bother about writing just understand this right if the diastole is shortened the time for the heart to fill is reduced isn't it right because it's a diastole your heart is filling right your time for the heart to reduce by fill is reduced understood understood yeah okay look here now now if the time for the heart if the time for the heart to fill is reduced if the time for the heart to fill is reduced what is reduced our end diastolic volume is what reduced yes or no ah huh? 
if that time for the heart to fill is reduced right if that time for the heart to fill is reduced right our end diastolic volume is reduced right okay clear now look here guys if the end diastolic volume is reduced we know our stroke volume is proportional to what end diastolic volume right so if it fills only you can pump right our stroke volume is proportional to end diastolic volume right our stroke volume is proportional to end diastolic volume clear right fine understood now look at this guys look here stroke volume is proportional to end so when the end diastolic volume is reduced right your stroke volume is reduced understood what is cardiac output what is cardiac output stroke volume into what heart rate stroke volume into heart rate right stroke volume into heart rate yes or no right stroke volume into heart rate the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle per minute now what is going to happen right our stroke volume is reducing heart rate is increasing right stroke volume is reducing heart rate is increasing up to a certain level of heart rate right up to a certain level of heart rate your stroke volume is increase decreasing so your stroke volume is decreasing heart rate is what increasing right up to a certain level of heart rate because of the increase in the heart rate your cardiac output which is stroke volume into heart rate will increase right will increase right right even though stroke volume is decreasing heart rate is what increasing cardiac output is equal to what stroke volume into heart rate the so stroke volume is decreasing heart rate is increasing the increasing heart rate by right, increasing heart rate will maintain the cardiac output until a certain point right but when the heart rate goes to 200 210 220 basically there is no diastole at all right basically there is no diastole at all basically there is no time for the heart to fill right there is no time for the heart to fill right there is no time for the heart to fill so whatever the heart rate you don't have a stroke volume right you don't have a cardiac output right you don't have a cardiac output understood guys right when the heart rate is going for a very high level our diastole is shortened 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 it is shortened to a point there is no time to fill right there is no time to fill there is no filling there is no cardiac output they will just collapse they will just collapse later in medicine we study right cardiac arrest right arrhythmias arrhythmias what is happening arrhythmias in later in medicine is this right we say if there is a ventricular fibrillation heart is right beating at the rate of 200 240 250 right right there is no cardiac output right pulse is not palpable blood pressure is not recordable right patient is going into arrest understood right this is how it happens is it okay guys yeah right right okay look here the next thing right a few words about the conduction system of the heart right right okay guys look here so we all know right we all know right the electrical activity of the heart right the electrical activity of the heart is starting from the sa node right it is starting from the sa node a node which is just situated here right sa node 
essay note is considered to be the pace maker of the heart right pace maker of the heart right essay note is considered to be the pace maker of the heart clear is considered to be the pace maker of the heart right now look here so when the electrical activity starts in the essay note right through the atrial muscles through the atrial muscles right atrial muscles right there are internodal pathways the electrical activity or the current will pass to the av node right electrical activity or current will pass to the av node right electrical activity or the current will pass to the av node right okay it will go to the av node understood right okay it will go to the av node now from the av node it goes into the it goes into the right ventricle right it goes into the ventricle right so here you have something called right here his bundle his bundle his bundle his bundle is dividing into right and left right and left right is dividing into two right and left and that is further dividing right that is further dividing into perkenji fibers that is further dividing into perkenji fibers right perkenji fibers right further dividing into perkenji fibers right perkenji fibers right into perkenji fibers right perkenji fibers right and is supplying the ventricle right supplying the ventricle come i look here look here look here right now the clinical point here is starting from the sa node it is coming from the sa node to av node sa node to av node right from the av node it comes to the his bundle right and the right bundle and left bundle right bundle and left bundle right right bundle and left bundle right from the right bundle and left bundle then it comes to the perkenji fibers and supplying the ventricle the what i want to tell is for the current for the current for the electrical activity for the current or electrical activity to come from the sa node to av node right to come from the sa node to av node right sa node to av node right the only way so yes once it has come from the sa node to av node once it has come to av node av node the only way to go to the ventricle right the only way to go to the ventricle is via this av node clear in other words what i am trying to say is the current cannot go this way current cannot go this way current cannot go this way right current right it can't go in the way it wants if it wants to go to the ventricle it has to go through the av node clear right okay guys right so from the right atria right your current or the electrical activity right the current or electrical activity to go to the ventricle it has to go through the av node understood why it is important is right why it is important is this av node act as a gate this av node act as a gate right the av node act as a gate gate it's a gate it's a gate it's a gate right so if you want to go this way to that way the only way to go is via the gate right you can't go in the way you want right it should be via the gate right it should be via the gate understood clear it should be via the gate right because later we study guys this is a very good mechanism right it's a very good mechanism because right because right because right because right this av node right this av node right has a delay this av node has a delay it has a delay for example even though 300 electrical activity comes from the atria right 
say ADVI is discharging at the rate of 300, right? ADVI is discharging at the rate of 300, right? If that 300 has to go to the ventricle, it has to go through what? AV node, right? If that 300 has to go to the ventricle, it has to go through the AV node. And the AV node has a delay. Even though 300 comes, AV node will allow, AV node will allow only about 150. Only about 150. That's a good thing because, that's a good thing. Because we know if all 300 goes to ventricle, if all 300 goes to ventricle, right? 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 Right? If all 300 goes to ventricle, the ventricle will start to fire at the rate of 300, right? Ventricle depolarize at the rate of 300, isn't it? Right? Right? And just now I said to you, right? Just imagine if the ventricle is right, right, firing at the rate of 300, basically there is no diastole, isn't it? Basically there is no diastole. Basically there is no filling. Basically there is no stroke volume. The patient will die. Right? Patient will die. Right? So the good thing we are having is our body is structured in a way. This is the gate. If you want to go through this, right, go through this, right, you have to go through the gate. Sometimes in some people, sometimes in some people, they have some words like this, some new pathways, this way, this way, this way. Right? Right? In some, that's a disease. We study in medicine. Right? Some people, they have some additional pathways. Right? Additional pathways. You bypass the gate. Right? In a normal person, he can't bypass the gate. But in some condition, they will bypass. That's a disease. We study in medicine. So if they bypass the gate, nothing to control, no? Right? Nothing to control. Right? So when they develop a disease, they can't do anything. Right? They can't do anything. Right? They can't do anything. Right? Okay? Right. Right? Okay? That's about that I talked. Right? Right. Okay, guys. I'll give you one minute. Right? Just think about the things we have done up to this point. We started from the anatomy of the heart, right? We started from the anatomy of the heart. We talked about the cardiac chambers and the great vessels, right? We talked about the differences in the ventricular wall thickness. We talked about the valves and we talked about the papillary muscle structure. And we said why it is clinically important. Clear? Then we talked why the muscle thickness is important when it comes to myocardial infarction. So after that, we have started talking about the blood supply of the heart, right? We started the RTS supply, venous supply, and we talked about the areas involved whenever there is a, right, what do you say, obstruction to the blood supply, the ischemia or infarction. And we said why that is clinically important when it comes to, what do you say, the diagnosis, where is the problem, and how are you going to correlate in the ECG? Clear? We talked about the borders of the heart and the surface of the heart, and we have discussed how are we going to correlate that when it comes to the chest X-ray. Right? We talked about the anatomy of the nerve supply of the heart, where we discussed about the mechanisms of the referred pain. Clear? Referred pain. Right? And we saw how the sympathetic and the parasympathetic has an effect on the heart. Right? Okay. Well, then we talked about the physiology. We talked about the cardiac cycle, heart sounds, right? And what is the importance of the heart weight with the, what do you say, filling, etc. Right? And now we are there, right? Okay. Now we are there. Uh, okay. Now we are there at the point of stroke volume. Right? Fine, look here now. Right? Third discuss. Lamai, look here. Uh, okay. Well, right? Are you there me? Right, look here. If you look at how the heart rate is regulated, right? How the heart rate is regulated, right? Regulated. You are aware. In the medulla, in the medulla, we are having a cardiac center, right? Cardiac center in the medulla, 
like your respirator is center, like your respirator is center, right? Okay, like the respirator is center. Clear? Now look here. What is happening is, what is happening is, right? Your sympathetic supply, right? Your sympathetic supply is stimulating. It's stimulating, right? It's stimulating the heart, right? It's stimulating the heart. It increases the heart rate, it increases the contractility, it increases the cardiac output, right? The parasympathetic, parasympathetic, which is coming from the vagus, which is coming from the vagus, vagus, that is inhibitory. That is cardio inhibitory. In addition, you may have heard something called good old days, these barrel receptors, right? Barrel receptors. There are some places like the carotid sinus and carotid bodies and the aortic arch, aortic arch, right? So you have some receptors there. What they will do is, oh my, look here. When there is an adequate cardiac output, when there is an adequate cardiac output, when there is an adequate cardiac output, when these receptors are stretched, when these receptors are stretched, right? When these receptors are stretched, they will tell the message, right? They will tell the message, right? They will tell the message. They will go and inhibit the sender telling, okay? They will go and inhibit the sender telling, right? So there is an adequate, right? There is adequate output, right? Reduce the weight. Reduce the weight, right? We are stretched, right? We are overstretched, right? These will go and inhibit that your cardiac center, right? Right? I'll come back to that why this point is coming clinically important. Now, my look here, right? Okay, right? Uh, sometimes we'll study in medicine later. There are conditions, there are conditions, right? There are conditions, right? There are conditions where your heart is beating at a very high rate, right? Where your heart is beating at a very high rate, right? I will talk about it in medicine, right? In a very high rate. When the heart is beating at a very high rate, in some places, you are doing something, you are applying a pressure here, which is called, right? Carotid sinus massage, right? It's called what? Carotid sinus massage, right? So what you are trying to do is, you are trying to stimulate these receptors, right? You are trying to, is the carotid no? Right, I hope you can all feel your carotid pulse, isn't it? Yes or no? Right, right, carotid pulse, right? So you are trying to stimulate these receptors, right? You are trying to stimulate these receptors and you are trying to give an input, right? You are trying to give an input to inhibit the cardiac center, right? To inhibit the cardiac center, right? To inhibit the cardiac center, right? So later when I tell, right? I'm not going to talk that in the medicine class because in that case, there is no way you finish it off, right? You can't finish medicine, right? But it's nice if somebody knows these things before you enter there, right? Okay, the next thing, right? Right, this is what you're trying to do, guys, right? Right, right, you stimulate the carotid sinus, right? You stimulate the carotid sinus where you trigger the bellow receptor reflex and you try to increase the vagal tone, right? You try to increase the vagal tone, right? Vagal tone. So when you're trying to increase the vagal tone, right? When you're trying to increase the vagal tone, right? When you're trying to increase the vagal tone, right? Okay. So that will slow down your heart rate right, that will stimulate your parasympathetic, that will have an impact on the SA note and AV note, AV note, AV note, right, AV note, right, okay, AV note, and that will slow down the heart. Are you okay after that? Yes or no? Right, right. Now look here. 
light isn't uh, the same thing I discussed again distress quickening so you are aware light light you are aware if you look at the stroke volume right if you look at the stroke volume that is the amount of blood right that is the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle right amount of blood pumped by each ventricle right pumped by each ventricle uh light per beat depends obviously on the convectility right depends obviously on the convectility right obviously on the convectility right people who are watching through the youtube just send me a message guys in the youtube are you okay is everything is okay up to this point right convectility right it's obviously depending on your preload what is the preload what is the volume you are having in diastolic volume right right that is your end diastolic volume right end diastolic volume it depends on your preload right preload and what is you mean by the word after load right after load that is the pressure that is the pressure against which you are pumping right that is the pressure against which you are pumping right okay for example the pressure in the aorta if you look at the left side so if that pressure is going up and up it's very difficult to pump right right it's very difficult to pump it is a pressure against which you are pumping if that pressure is going up if that pressure is going up right if that pressure is going up that will reduce the stroke volume right okay and at the end of the day we know our cardiac output depends on the heart rate as well as the stroke volume right i'll talk about the blood pressure right 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 how this blood pressure is regulated right how this blood pressure is regulated right okay shall we move on because we are going to the next area in the physiology right right so as i said right as i said whenever the barrel receptors are stretched whenever the barrel receptors are stretched right whenever the barrel receptors are stretched what they are going to do is what they are going to do is right what they are going to do is right they are going to activate the they are going to activate the they are going to activate the cardiac inhibitory center right cardiac inhibitory center right it is going to inhibit the cardiac accelerator center right cardiac accelerator center right it is going to inhibit the cardiac accelerator center it also reduces the vasomot inhibits the vasomotor center right vasomotor center so all these right all these all these all these right all these will reduce the cardiac output will reduce the cardiac output will reduce the cardiac output right will reduce the cardiac output right and it will cause vasodilatation it will cause vasodilatation it will cause vasodilatation right it will cause vasodilatation right right so at the end of the day that will bring your blood pressure right that will bring your blood pressure down right blood pressure down right right that is a protective mechanism that is a protective mechanism right protective mechanism right on the other hand when your blood pressure is low say you are having hypovolemia hypovolemia so after the hemorrhage after the hemorrhage after the hemorrhage 
after the hemorrhage right after the hemorrhage right when your blood pressure is low when your blood pressure is low right now the bello receptors they are firing less right they are going to fire less right normally if they fire more they activate the cardiac inhibitory center right if they fire more they activate the cardiac inhibitory center right now what are they going to do is they are going to fire less they are going to fire less when they are going to fire less when they are going to fire less right the inhibition to the cardi the cardiac inhibitory centers right they are not activated they are not activated but at the same time right but at the same time but at the same time right right okay what is going to be stimulated is cardiac acceleratory centers which increases the heart rate which increases the convectility which increases the convectility right so the heart rate is going to increase the convectility is going to increase right your stroke volume is going to increase your cardiac output is going to increase they also stimulate the vasomotor center they also stimulate the vasomotor center if you look at the vasomotor center right what it will do is what it will do is right it will cause vasoconstriction it will cause vasoconstriction right so we are going to study right blood pressure depends on two things one is the cardiac output other one is peripheral resistance right peripheral resistance the resistance to blood flow right resistance to blood flow when there is a constriction of the vessels right when there is constriction of the vessels right that increases the peripheral resistance right peripheral resistance clear guys okay right okay now we'll move on to the next part of the physiology what is happening in heart failure right okay when it comes to heart failure right when it comes to heart failure clear yeah. the heart is pumping blood right heart is pumping blood if you want to break well just let me know eh just do me it means right the heart is pumping blood right okay heart is pumping blood to perfuse each and every organ right to perfuse each and every organ if you look at the right side of the heart right when we clear pumping blood right right when we clear pumping blood right right when we is pumping blood to the lungs left when we clear pumping blood everywhere else are there in the lungs so lungs also there is something is there bronchial artery so what is heart failure it is the inability of the heart to maintain adequate perfusion right is the inability of the heart to maintain adequate perfusion right right adequate perfusion now guys right now my look here you don't worry about that right don't worry about that right don't worry about slide right right now look here now okay guys i'll tell me i'll tell in my words heart is right okay clear heart is not pumping adequately heart is not pumping adequately right okay that's what heart failure right that's what you call as heart failure in most of the time most of the time as some also more difference i will talk about it later in medicine heart is not pumping adequately so the organs are hypoperfused right the organs are hypoperfused right less perfused your body knows right your body knows there is no adequate pumping from the heart right something is going wrong right your body knows something is going wrong okay when the body knows something is going wrong 
like something is going wrong, what your body will try to do is the body will try to compensate that, right? Your body will try to compensate that. Okay, your body will try to compensate that. So heart is not pumping adequately. Cardiac output is not adequate. How can you compensate? How can you compensate? You increase the heart rate, isn't it? You increase the heart rate, right? You increase the contractility, right? You increase the heart rate. You increase the contractility, right? How can you increase the heart rate? How can you increase the contractility, right? How can you increase the contractility, right? Okay. So just now we studied, right? That's the action of the sympathetic nervous system, right? That's the action of what? Sympathetic nervous system. So when the heart is failing, your body knows heart is failing. Cardiac output is not adequate, right? So I have to do something to increase the cardiac output, right? Cardiac output, cardiac output. So I'll activate the sympathetic nervous system. I'll activate the sympathetic nervous system. Clear? I'll activate the sympathetic nervous system. Understood? So once the sympathetic nervous system is activated, right? So, right? Either of you guys. Yes or no? Right? Once the sympathetic nervous system is activated, it will increase the heart rate. It will increase the heart rate. It will increase the contractility. Clear? It will increase the heart rate. It will increase the contractility. Second, right? Right? Okay. The second, right? Good. The second, okay, guys. Are there? Heart is not pumping adequately. Right? Heart is not pumping adequately. Right? So the body knows it's not functioning properly. Right, we study later in nephrology, right, in nephrology class, the similar class like this in cardio, we'll do an nephro. When we do the nephro, we'll study, there's something called renin angiotensin system, right? There's something called renin angiotensin system, right? Have you heard it? Yes or no? Right? So, so what the body will do is, the second thing the body is going to do is, the body is going to activate the renin angiotensin system. The body is going to activate the right renin angiotensin system. Hi right, guys, right? So you may remember, otherwise I'll study there in the nephrology. When the renin angiotensin system is activated, right, it will go and increase something called aldosterone. Right? You go and increase something called aldosterone. Right? Okay. Aldosterone. So you may be aware when the aldosterone, right? When the aldosterone is increased, what it causes sodium and water retention, right? Sodium and water retention, right? Sodium and water retention. When the, right? Okay. When the, what do you say? When an angiotensin system is activated, right? When an angiotensin system is activated, right? Activated, okay. The angiotensin 2 will cause vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 will cause vasoconstriction. Right? Vasoconstriction. That will try to increase the blood pressure. That will try to increase the blood pressure. Right? Okay. That will try to increase the blood pressure. Are you okay? Right? Okay. Are you okay up to that point? Now look here. Now, heart is not pumping adequately, right? Heart is now, right? Right, pumping adequately, right? Okay. Heart is now, pump, uh, sorry, heart is not pumping adequately. The body knows heart is not pumping adequately. So body wants to pump more and more. Your body wants to pump more and more. What will happen? Your left ventricle start to hypertrophy. Right, left ventricle will start to hypertrophy. Will start to enlarge. Left ventricle will start to hypertrophy. Left ventricle will start to enlarge. Right, left ventricle will start to enlarge. Right. So it's a dilatation and hypertrophy. It's a dilatation and hypertrophy. So all three mechanisms, what we have discussed so far, right? All three mechanisms, right? 
activation of the sympathetic nervous system, activation of the renin angiotensin system, right? Activation of the renin angiotensin system, right? Activation of the renin angiotensin system, clear? And activation of the, sorry, the left ventricular hypertrophy. All these try to maintain the cardiac output. Right, all these try to maintain the cardiac output because the heart is failing. Even though it looks good, guys, at the early stages it looks good because it is increasing the cardiac output. Right, it's increasing the cardiac output. In a long term, this is going to cause harm. Right, in the long term, this is going to cause harm. So the physiology, right? So up to this point, it looks like a physiology is good. It's good. Right? In the long term, it's going to become a pathology. Right? Right? This looks good at the start. At the end of the day, this is bad. Or the pathophysiology. Understood? Clear? Right. Done. So in other words, right, in other words, Right, in other words, okay, in other words, right, this is a vicious cycle, right, something you want to stop, right, something you want to stop, clear? So I talked about the, what do you say, anatomy, I talked about how the normal physiology and abnormal physiology, now, our patient who was born normally, right, there we discussed his embryology, Right, he had a normal anatomy up to this point. Right, he had a normal anatomy up to this point, and his heart is functioning right normally. Now he's 55 years, right? Now he's 55 years or 60 years, right? He's smoking, right? 55 years, he's smoking, he's taking alcohol, he's having diabetes, right? Now he's going to develop ischemic heart disease, right? Okay, so you remember at the start of the class, I started with a 65 year old man coming with, coming with a chest pain, right? Now what has have to, happened to him, right? What has happened to him, right? Now I look here, right, look here, right? Are you there with me, right? What has happened to this person? Now look here, now, this is how he start off. I'll go into pathology, yeah? I have finished the anatomy physiology, now we are shifting into pathology, right? This is how our patient has started off, right? Isn't it? Started off, right? It's a normal vessel, right? So what I am trying to show you is, okay, right, right? Okay, right? He had a normal vessel up to this point, right? He had a normal vessel, right? These vessels are patent, right? These vessels are patent. Now in one of the vessels or in multiple vessels, right? Because of the risk factors, he's going to, right? Because of the risk factors, right? Because of the risk factors, he's going to develop plaques, cholesterol, your cholesterol is, say he's going to develop a block here. In simple term, he's going to develop a block here for the first year, second year, if you are listening, right? Right, if you are not sure of pathology, I will tell this is a block, right? Right, it's a block, right? He's going to develop a block here. So in other words, in a pathological, proper pathology, we'll tell us, a, right? We are going to tell in the pathological term, this is called atherosclerosis, right? Atherosclerosis, clear? Now look here, guys, how the pathology starts. Now, right, say, here's the risk factors. Our man is having risk factors. He's having hypertension, he's having diabetes, he's having LDL cholesterol increase, he's smoking, and there is genetic causes, familial causes. Because of all these risk factors, I might look here, right? He's going to develop a plaque Right? It's a cholesterol plant. Right? So it's slowly starting to develop. Right? 
at 30 years, 40 years, slowly starting to do it, right? Slowly starting to do it, right? Now it is enlarging, right? Now it is enlarging, right? Now it is enlarging, right? So now, right now, at one point, that I talk about the pathology, what is the eye in the plot, right? What is the eye in the plot, right? What is the eye in the plot, right? Okay. At one point, you can imagine, right? At one point, you can imagine there is a reduction in the blood supply, isn't it? Right? This I had drawn a cross section of a vessel, eh? Right? If I cut it down here, a vessel, there's a plaque, okay? Okay, a vessel, there is a plaque, I have drawn a cross section of a vessel, right? Do you understand what I'm talking? Yes or no? Right? I have drawn a cross section of a vessel, right? So now he's developing a plaque, right? Fine, guys, look here. Now, right, it's, it's very simple like this. Right. Say, I don't know how it's clear it is. This is a vessel, this is a plaque, this is a plaque. I just draw a cross section, right? I'll draw a cross section, right? Okay. Now what is happening is guys, right? There's the reduction in the blood supply, right? There's a the reduction in the blood supply. Initially, some blood is going on, guys. Right, some blood is going. Right, some blood is going. Right, some blood is going. Some blood is going. Right, some blood is going. Right, some blood is going. Right, okay, some blood is going. Right, I guys me. Now, this decrease in the blood supply. Right, let me look here, look here, look here, look here. So when there is a decrease, there is a blood decrease in the blood supply. Right, there's a decrease in the blood supply. Now the, our patient is right starting to complain chest pain. Right? Starting to complain chest pain. Why chest pain? There is a decrease in the blood supply. Right? Decrease in the blood supply. Say there's a 50% block. I'm telling you, right, for your understanding, there is a 50% block. Right? There is a 50% block. Right? So he's telling you chest pain. Now when is your chest pain? You're asking your pain. When is your chest pain? When you are sitting, do you have pain? No, doctor, I'm okay. Right? When I am sitting, I'm okay. My pain comes, right? My pain comes when I am walking. Right? My pain comes when I am walking. Okay. When I am walking only, I'm having my pain. Right? I don't have an issue when I am sitting. Right? I don't have an issue when I am sitting. Understood? The pain comes when I'm walking. Right? Okay. The reason why he is telling so is there is a reduction in the blood supply. Obviously, right? There is a reduction in the blood supply. Say 50% is going. Right? 50% is going. Just for an example. The 50% is going. Whatever the 50% going, right? Whatever the 50% going, right? Whatever the 50% going is adequate to meet the demands. Is adequate to meet the demands. Meet the demands. When he is at rest, some of fifty percent is going on, you know, guys. Right? Meet the demands. When he is at rest, right? When he is at rest, that is not adequate to meet the some. Somebody blood is there, no? Somebody blood is there, no? Right? That is not adequate to meet the demands. Right? Not adequate to meet the demands when he is walking. Because your demand is more. Demand is more. Right? I'll come back to the point again. So this fellow is having a chronic plaque. It's a chronic plaque. Right? Chronic plaque. I'll come back to the point again. If you look at this chronic plaque, what is there? What is there? What is plaque? Lamai, what is inside is, what is inside is cholesterol. This is the cholesterol. This is the cholesterol. Right? Cholesterol. Clear? Cholesterol. This cholesterol is surrounded by this fibrous capsule. Right? He has a nice capsule. Nice capsule. Right? There is a fibrous capsule. There is a fibrous capsule. Are you with me? Right, fibrous capsule. 
light fibrous capsule. And this block is there for a long time. This block is there for a long time. Since a block is there for a long time, there will be some collateral source. We'll talk about that in medicine later. Like we also give some supply. Right, they will form new vessels, which also give some supply. Which also give some supply. Right. But now whatever it is, whatever he is having is okay at rest. Right. Because of the reduction in the blood supply, when he walks, when he walks, right, when he walks, right, when he runs, the blood supply is not adequate. He comes and tells you there is a pain when he is running. Right. When he stops, the pain stops. Right, when he stops, the pain stops. Right, okay. We later study a word called stable angina in medicine. Clear? Are you okay up to that point? Yeah, right. Well, the rest I'm going to talk is now I will convert my topic. Actually, this is what I'm going to do. Right, I'll just tell you the outline. What I'm going to talk, maybe. In the next class, we can talk. That doesn't matter, right? The today's session is a free session, no? Right? Look here. I am going to talk from now onwards. What will happen if so? I told you there is a capsule. There is a cholesterol. There is a capsule. What is going to happen if the capsule breaks? Right? What is going to happen if the capsule breaks? Right? Okay. You may be aware. If the capsule breaks, this is cholesterol. This is cholesterol. What is this? This is blood. This is cholesterol. This is blood. Right? This is blood. Yeah? The, you may know, otherwise you will come to know, right? But right now itself, you are going to know. Cholesterol is something very thrombogenic. Thrombogenic. Right? So if the capsule ruptures, this blood and cholesterol will touch. This blood and cholesterol will touch. So I will tell you when the blood and cholesterol touch, now there is something called thrombus. Clot, 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 clot. Right? How the thrombus forms. Right? I mean, look here, listen here, don't worry about writing. Right? I will teach you again. Right? Right? How the thrombus forms. Right? How the thrombus forms. So I will tell you here, guys. Right? So suddenly there is a thrombus. Right? Right? Suddenly. So when the thrombus suddenly starts, the whole lumen is blocked. Right? Everything is blocked. Everything is blocked. Right, everything is blocked. The whole human is blocked. Right, all human is blocked. Right, so right, no blood at all. Right, no blood at all. Right, is going to come with a heart attack. Right, I will talk. Right, how the what do you say that occurs. Right, then I will talk. What are the pathological changes that is occurring in infarction? Right, that is occurring in infarction. Clear. That is occurring in infarction. Clear. Then I'm going to talk about the biochemistry, right? There are cardiac enzymes, 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 right? Okay, there are cardiac enzymes. So how, what is actually happening in the biochemistry of cardiac enzymes? Right, the biochemistry you need to know for life. Then I'm going to talk about the thrombus formation, right? Right, how the thrombus is formed. How the clot is formed, right? So what is paired response, right? What are the mediators involved in that, right? What is the mechanism of your aspirin there? What is the mechanism of your pharma clopidogrel there, right? That's a pharmacology we are going to discuss. After that, we are going to talk about the clotting response, how the clots are formed, how the fibrin clot is formed. Then we are going to talk how can you lyse that fibrin, right? Thrombolysis, right? How can you lyse that fibrin, right? What are the other methods to lyse the fibrin, right? How the antiplatelet acts, anticoagulant acts, right? At what part of the pharmacology or physiology, right? Your drugs are coming, right? This is not medicine, right? But everything related to medicine, right? Okay, fine. And what are the new options available? Why right, new options available, even though that is not very related to this topic, just for the completion, why right, new options available? And whenever they have pain, how are you going to tackle the pain? Right? Whenever they are having heart failure, right, heart failure, 
how are you going to manage pharmacologically right what is the mechanism of each and every drugs what is the mechanism of each and every antihypertensive drugs clear guys right that's how one topic will be done right this is cardiology right like that respiratory right like the nephrology gi neurology well whether the course i am going to start or not right i will decide today evening right depending on your feedback right right the huge headache and it's a huge time consuming for me right even what i earn from this i can simply earn there right so i don't have to bother too much about this right okay so well if i am starting will be 10 right we have done the first class we'll keep on doing for the 10 classes right Right, I will direct class to be three and a half hours. Today I just stop about ten fifteen minutes earlier, right or twenty minutes earlier. So it's going to be next class will be three and a half hours. Later we'll do three hours. Right in the time I said, if you miss that, right, if you miss that, there will be options like your surgery Dr. Manakar is doing, right. So it'll be ten thousand. The what do you say the cost fee, right. So it's better guys if you pay in one. But if you have real issues, let us know. But not everybody come and ask. Double work. It's double work for us, right. The headache also. These pain things are headache, no? So these things you can do whenever you want, right? Just there is a, right? No, but you say headache like this, right? So that's thing, right? I don't know how useful it is. I hope that's up to you to decide. I can't come and advertise, no? Right? This is useful. This is not useful, right? That's up to you to decide. And if I am doing, I basically thinking in another ten years, right? It should be the teaching, right? Basically, the whole university system should shatter, right? We'll see how it goes, right? So let me know your feedbacks, right? In the what do you say, Messenger and uh, WhatsApp, right? WhatsApp and Telegrams, right? I'll keep the videos on, right? It will be there forever, right? The first class video, right? If anybody missed that or anything, it's up to you, right? Okay. So we'll see. Stop with that. Bye.